I'm Jenny Dingle, the five minute read maker, and I'm here today to talk about knots. When you've made even 10 reads or so, this becomes sort of a non-issue. Your hands sort of start to know exactly what they're doing and you move on to thinking about higher level tasks like, is my read wound straight on the oval? Am I sure I'm not overwound? Is the overlap correct? Which way was that supposed to go again? But when you're first starting out, this is a complex task. In my reading circles and my boot camps, this is always the moment that people call me over to watch them tie knots and help them find their way through. Hopefully this short video will help you to find your way through too. Now the prequel to the knot is leaving enough space at the bottom of the wind, just a gap of a few millimeters to accommodate the knots between the thread here and the top of the cork. When you get to the bottom of the reed, you've been winding for a while and you've been holding tension in the string here and here for so long that it feels terrifying to allow any slack in it at all. And that's fair. But to make this step safe and to prevent any looseness from sneaking into my wind, I'll use my left index finger like so. I'll just hold it tightly at the bottom of the wind that I've done and I'll also stick that tip of my finger out to help me form my loop. Then I pay out some slack with my right hand. Sometimes my thread will get all twisty at this point. I just make the, th the loop a little bigger and I don't worry about it. Um, the loop is underhand. It's away from me and then over my finger. That makes sense. I bring the top thread of the loop onto my left finger, hanging right next to my reed, and I grab it here with my finger. This next step is the magic part. It's how we keep the tension that we built up in the winding process. Uh, before we let anything go with my left hand, I bring my two right hand fingers into my loop from below and then I can separate those fingers and spread them, here we go, to bring the tension back in. And now with that tension maintained, I can turn my loop upside down over the reed, slide it down into the space and pull it tight. Now I've got my tension in place again, and of course now it's safe because I've put my first knot in, but I never stop with just one knot. I'll do at least two, usually three, and either way I'll fill up that space between my thread and my cork, because that also helps to hold everything in place. Um, so let me demonstrate that again. I've got my finger here, holding my tension, and also making a space for my loop. I'm going to take my thread and go underhand away from me, make a loop grab it from below, and then turn it upside down over the reed. Uh, one more time. Okay, so that's the way to put a nice secure knot down at the bottom of your reed. That's the way to do it efficiently and easily. And you can see here, I hope, that there's a nice snug knot, and that, uh, hopefully that won't unravel on us. Um, this has been a five minute read maker lesson. Uh, follow these short videos right here on YouTube and subscribe to them if you wish. If you have any questions or concerns, you can find me at jennetingle.com. In fact, I'd love to hear what else I can help you with and what my next short video should address. Let me know. Have a great day.